All right. This is day six or seven. Uh, starting the disassembly of the boards. This is the input board here. So a few details. Of course, re remove the arms, uh, the extension arms uh, to the potentiometers or the switches actually. And this is actually very scary because you're always afraid of actually breaking one of these articulations in here because it's plastic. But never forget that this is like 40 year old plastic. So you're always afraid of breaking those. Well, apart from that, well, the board slides out easily. Uh, lots of screws to remove, and that's okay. Board is like a phenolic material, very common in those days. So you always have to be careful not not warm it too much. The annoyance here um, for me is are those uh, wire wrapped uh, connections in here which I don't have the tool and I'll probably need to find a, find a way to, to undo this, unwrap those and rewrap those because the problem with the wires. Otherwise I could simply try to lift the board, do the work and then bring it back because you don't want it to break those wires, those connections in here. Um, so yeah, I'll see what I'm gonna do about that. That's that's one of the annoyances of this thing. But I, in principle, I have to disassemble this board to remove those capacitors. And then there's the, uh, oops, there's the small input board all the way over there. I think there is a, a pair of capacitors in there. That's the main and the pre, the board that tri that tripped me off. <laughs> So, and apart from that, then I'll have to remove the two power amplifiers, the VU and the tone control board. Another interesting construction aspect, I'm not sure if you noticed here, but that's the volume board, the volume control board, is actually a break off of the tone board. You can tell here that they actually just pretty much did a, uh, <laughs> a uh, perforation on the board. And so this is basically they just break down and put this on uh, on an angle. You can even see the connections in here done with rigid wire. Anyways, this is just a quick update. Uh, we'll keep disassembling uh, this and keep moving on the amplifier. Well, also uh, the panel will be uh, will be cleaned. Uh, I will clean in place. I don't want to disassemble this 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 front panel. But obviously the knobs, uh, the knobs and buttons will also be uh, fixed. Sorry, will be cleaned, uh, including the big volume control. I still need to find a way to remove this balance uh, knob here. But the volume and all the others just pull them. And the switches you had, uh, you need to use a uh, Allen key. Uh, so the knobs are all into a bag and they'll be washed as well, so they can be super clean. And also, never forget, always put screws in containers and in bags so you don't lose them after, I don't know, how many times, how long you actually go through this process. You just don't lose them if you keep them organized. This is the assembly for the light bulbs with the prisms. This is glass and it'll probably be cleaned as well. Uh, this is glass that, that actually deflects the 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 what I mean, the light from the light bulbs in here. This is a light bulb set, all the way to the oops the view meters. They are down there. The view meters are here. The two of them. So yeah, this is just one additional detail. Which also removing that exposes the entire uh, view board which is very dirty so still very dirty I'm gonna clean it up and there are two capacitors a pair of capacitors in here that I, that I need to replace but I was telling that I didn't want it to remove this front panel but I suspect that to remove these boards I don't see a way without removing the the front panel so yeah I think I'll have to bite that bullet <laughs> well Removing the prism with the light bulbs revealed also, he pulled also a red LED that goes to the front panel of the power switch. But seriously, Yamaha, glue the LED? Ugh. Okay, I'll see what I can do after 
after I finish with this. <laughs> okay, so the service manual, the second step to opening up the equipment uh, was to actually remove what they called the rear panel. In fact, it was the bottom panel. Removing it, whoa, it reveals the entire wiring, including the high power wiring of the amplifier. The, the, this is the power uh, supply. Also, <laughs> here's another relay here. And this is actually the power supply section of the entire board with the two fuses in here and all sorts of stuff, sorts of craze in here. So this will be the one that will actually demand a lot more work than all the other boards. So it's quite impressive. Also, quite interesting, <laughs> the tone board is down below here. So actually it may be interesting because I, I probably can work on that without having to remove stuff because there's the capacitors in here but they can be accessible from the other side too. So I may be able to actually remove these two capacitors in here without having to remove this board and perhaps even the front panel. Let's see how that goes. But it's interesting here how to see these, these guys here and also uh, the big potentiometers in here. No wonder these guys here are in excellent shape. And also the switches, which I can actually clean, they were actually a bit scratchy. I can clean them, nice, them nicely from this side of the of the chassis so it's really really impressive piece of equipment but it's amazing how you have two fuses in here these fuses are ceramic fuses and I think they are connected on the power transformer so these are input fuses uh, power supply fuses and I suspect that these four fuses in here are for the loudspeakers oops sorry are these four fuses here are for the loudspeakers so that maybe uh, the, or maybe not, maybe these four, sorry, these four fuses may be for the various voltages of the power supply, uh, not for the loudspeakers. I don't think this thing has fuses for the loudspeakers. But also you can appreciate the beautiful, beautiful power resistors in here. It's amazing. The red ones, really, really nice. And of course, the board is a little bit dirty. But not that bad because it's on the opposite side. Uh, another aspect of uh, Japanese transistors, <laughs> usually they power transistors. They usually use green for PNP and black for NPN. Overall, that's the other side, the dark side of the moon. <laughs> so I'm going to start uh, replacing the capacitors, board per board, system by system. So in this case here, I'm going to start with the front, the, f the front node, the input board, or they call function board, uh, and it's always important to plan carefully. So basically, you always want to locate all the capacitors you're going to replace, or all the parts, if there are other parts that you want to replace. So basically, I have four capacitors here, 100 microfarads, and then there's the uh, two capacitors here, 1000 microfarads by 6 volts, and uh, arrangement here of capacitors with smaller capacitors. And what is important here is also not only to know where your parts are, but also the polarity. So you don't want to really to, to put something in reverse and all that so you can blow up in your face. So for that, I, I usually like, what I usually do, I like to sketch, do a small sketch of the board. Uh, and, and also noting not only the values, but also the polarity, which is indicated, the negative is indicated by the black uh, part of it. So basically I try to map this way so I don't actually miss when I actually remove the capacitors because it's easy to remove a capacitor and then you don't know how to, which capacitor was in that place in particular. So it's good to have a sketch uh, just, just in case. I also took pictures of the entire setup so also helps um, and that's, the, that's the, my, my careful planning uh, right now. And not only that but I also write down all the values that I need and, and that actually helps me get to the uh, separating the parts, the bags of parts that I'm going to need here in case the, these capacitors in here, the, 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 the bags that I already have categorized initially. And another important aspect or interesting aspect is to appreciate the, evolu the evolution of technology. This is a thousand microfarads by 6.3 volts. Oops, not sure if it's too close. 
So this is a 1000 microfarads by 16 volts, so 10 volts more, but this, the difference in size is significant. And not only that, this capacitor is not rated for temperature. This one is rated for operation to 105 C, and this is also rated for the number of hours. And besides, it's a Rubicon, so it's a good brand that you have here. So basically, that's, that's how the evolution of technology goes. Similar thing <laughs> for the 100 microfarads by 35 volts. That's the Nishikon capacitor that I have here, which is the same brand as this one. But this one is a uh, 100 microfarads by 25 volts, 10 volts less. But you can tell how smaller the newer one is. Besides, this one is rated. So this one is rated to operation up to 85 C, 85 degrees C, and this is one is rated to 105, as is shown here. So yeah, that's the that's the the the, the starting of the capacitor replacement, and you'll be you'll be looking good soon. All right, starting to take off the first capacitors in here. Hmm, look at the state. Look at their state, the overall state. This one pretty dry. This one pretty dry. This one really wet. Starting to go down. This one as well a little bit wet. So that actually confirms that these capacitors, despite the amplifier was still ticking, these capacitors is really starting to go bad. And this is not solder flux. This is a real deal. So I'm gonna clean out this board and replace those capacitors ASAP. One additional detail, you can tell a little bit, oop, a little bit on those. Some of them, uh, you can tell they are a little bit swollen at the bottom. This one is not terribly bad, but, oops, sorry, this one is not terribly bad. Starting to go, but yeah, it's a little bit swollen. Another aspect here that I was actually looking, I was just looking around. <laughs> in this power supply here you can tell the difference these are the same capacitors you can tell the difference here one regular capacitor that is not swollen and this one is really swollen you can tell that the uh, the aluminum is really starting to go up these capacitors pop pop catastrophically you can tell the others ones are seem to be fine of course I don't have any other point of comparison but I can tell that these two are really, really, really about to blow up. And that's the reason why bigger capacitors, more modern, bigger capacitors, usually have something, as you call, these chamfers here. Oops, sorry. These chamfers here. See the letter K on top? These are actually chamfers. So if the capacitor, the internal pressure increases too much, the, these parts here open up and the capacitor releases the pressure without actually exploding like a, a bomb, a mini bomb, a mini pipe bomb actually. <laughs> so yeah, technology. And I am absolutely sure now that an entire re capacitor replacement is critical. Good, good news in the sense that I'm taking care of this now before it was too late. All right, finished replacing capacitors on the function board or input board as I call 400 microfarads then the 2000 microfarads and the little ones over there these little ones were a little bit harder to replace just because of the position but the best part of it didn't have to remove the wire wrapping that's a score for my for me and also just one additional detail here removing this board you can see the beautiful four Sankin transistors, the output ones. Beautiful. Well, here we are. Panel removed. Unfortunately, I had to do it. However, it was not that hard. I only had to desolder four wires for each of the VU, so it's not terribly bad because this will allow me, if you see closer, this will allow me to really do a thorough cleanup on this board. Of course, I cannot wash it or do anything but it actually be a lot easier to really do a thorough cleanup on this board uh, and also you allow me to do a thorough cleanup on all the switches let me just bring some more light to this <laughs> so hopefully you can see here 
but the switches are actually very dirty so it will allow me to do a really thorough cleanup also hair and all sorts of stuff that actually gets accumulated over the years so this will actually allow me to do good cleanup on that the reason why I actually remove that I actually had to remove the front panel and remove it also the, the LAN assign, assembly uh, I actually had to remove that because I needed to remove this board here which controls the VUs because there are two capacitors in here and also huh, one more hybrid Ugh. these hybrid circuits are really really scary because you don't want to blow up one of these, these are irreplaceable but anyways removing this board allows me to not only replace the capacitors on this board but also the four capacitors on the tone control board so overall I'm going to be able to do a, a really a really good uh, a really good assessment and, uh, and a clean up on these two alright these are the last capacitors the last capacitors for today uh, two 33 microfarads by 16 volts they are actually radio capacitors turn those on each side of the body of the capacitor and of course the modern capacitors are all usually axial which are they actually have the both terminals in the same side so how to adapt those actually there you are these capacitors are from the small board <laughs> there they are adapted I just twisted the bend bending the the leads accordingly using a uh, one uh, <laughs> a new uh, pliers that I got from my mother-in-law <laughs> with a round uh, with a round uh, round the round ends it actually allows me to do good very good uh, 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 round leads very beautiful round leads and this is actually from the small board on the back for the preamp that is the board with the switch that tripped me off tripped me off before <laughs> Oh well, so this is uh, the end uh, of this first round. You know why? Because now I need to go for the power supply, okay, the main power supply, and for the amplifiers as well, the base amplifiers. Problem with those boards is that several of these capacitors um, I need to I need to buy. Uh, I'm gonna buy a Mauser, and I'm I'm gonna wait for them to arrive before I actually move on. To this guy here the reason is because most of these capacitors are high voltage some of them i do have some of them i have used units which i don't want to put in here use it capacitors uh, remove it from other uh, spare boards and so definitely i wanted to make sure that everything here is high quality and the same thing with the power supply power amplifier as well which has just four capacitors of one microfarad but for 80 volts which is also high voltage relatively high voltage so i got um, I'm gonna get a few as well. So I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna end up this video uh, in a in a few days. See you then.